Hey, how you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of God Concept. I'm your host, Mr. Pagan. How's everybody doing? Got drink champs playing in the background. I'm sitting in a very relaxing atmosphere right now. And I'm thinking about conversations and the pursuit of happiness. Or conversations about the pursuit of happiness. What is happiness? What is it to pursue happiness? Happiness is something that's very, you know, it depends on what happiness is to you. I couldn't come up with words, words for that. Happiness is, is very based on, you know, very much based on the individual. Because what makes me happy might not make you happy. You know, in the pursuit of that, might make not a bit of sense to somebody else. For you ch- chasing your happiness, you know, somebody else may look. I say, why the hell is he chasing after that? That doesn't make me happy. But at the same time, you know, we can't really uh, any type of stigma on another person's idea of happiness or their pursuit of it. Everybody's chase is different. Everybody race is different as well. Right? Because some people's pursuit of happiness is as a predator. And some people's pursuit of happiness is as prey. Now, what would make a predator happy and what would make a pre- uh, prey happy might be one and the same or might be two different things. Right? But nonetheless, they're both looking for that happiness. They're both pursuing that happiness. You know? My thing is, we all supposed to chase this happiness. We all supposed to acquire and aspire to have this happiness in our life. You know what I mean? In our in our family life, in our, you know, life in general, you know? But the pursuit of this happiness that we all require, that we all, you know, pursue, I'm sorry, the fire trucks, they kind of took my thought for a moment. But in the pursuit of this happiness, you're going to go through a lot of rough things. Everybody knows it. Only a fool doesn't know that in the pursuit of happiness, there will come turmoil, uh, you know, fear, doubt, um, you know, rough patches, hard times. You know. So once you... Once you finally reach that goal and you got that happiness, was it really worth it? Or, (laughs) is the kicker, is it even the thing that makes you happy anymore? You pursued it all this time, went through all of this heartache and pain, and it's not even what you want anymore took the happiness out of it, you know. Just like there's a duality to us, living, breathing, talking, you know. There's a duality to that happiness as well. Because the same things that make you laugh make you cry. You know, that happiness has a price. You know, that joy, that, that peace, 
that sinfulness, whatever it is, it has a price. The question is, are you willing to make the sacrifices? Are you willing to, 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 to travel the road less traveled? It's not paved. It's a trail, and it's, it's a rough trail. You know, are you willing to travel that route? A lot of times we pursue happiness not for ourselves, but for others. And we attach others to that happiness that we're pursuing <clears throat> because we pursue it in their namesake. We pursue legacies in people's namesake. You know, really, to be honest with you, I've been pursuing happiness for a long time. But what I really rather have instead of happiness is peace and legacy. I'd rather build peace and legacy than to pursue happiness. Peace and legacy is something that lasts, that sustains, if you allow it. But happiness cannot persist, because it's always dependent on something. No emotion can persist, because it's always dependent on something, right? You know, happiness, joy, pain, anger, uh, all these things, you know, Their emotions. So, in the pursuit of happiness, is you know, it's something that's not really tangible. Yeah, you could you could get, you could reach a goal or a pinnacle that that makes you happy. You can do that, but after a while, the happiness fades away, because there will be something. There will be something there to interrupt that happiness. There will always be something there to, to interrupt the happiness. You know, so. I gravitate towards different things, you know. Legacy. And peace. You know. Yeah, you could disturb peace, but legacy cannot be destroyed. You know, someone could disturb your peace, but you could keep it. You know, legacy is something you can't destroy. Even if you could tarnish someone's legacy, I look at, you know, a lot of people who's been uh, convicted of, um, of doing heinous things in their life but their legacy is still intact. You know, people that's been shunned in society, celebrities, athletes, whatever, what have you, they've been shunned in society, but they still have their legacy intact. You know, when we look at just for example, uh, Michael Jackson and what, we, what he went through, he was accused of raping little boys and everything, but yet and still if you put a Michael Jackson concert out there, you're going to have people screaming and hollering and fainting over him, right? Because his legacy is still intact. Not to say he probably didn't never touch any little boys, and you know. It's all rhetoric. We wasn't in the room at the time. I'm going to just put that out there. I don't remember the time because I wasn't there. But I digress thing is, you know, whatever's in your heart to go after and pursue, right, is not really happiness. It's a divine order more so. It's an order to you from a higher power to do something else, to do something, you know, 
a lot of people has come to this point in our lives and we just, we realize that <clears throat> there's something else that we could be doing with ourselves. There's something else, you know. So when you go through so much, you start to wonder, am, am I doing the right things? Am I, am I pursuing in the right way? Or am I pursuing the right the, the right things that I'm supposed to be pursuing out of life? You know? A lot of people, <clears throat> they're raised and groomed to chase careers where they work for somebody, you know, the whole family was cops or the whole family was lawyers or the whole family was doctors or the whole family, you know, had city jobs and things like that. But we have individual, in, in, individualism, individual, I, <laughs> I can't say the word right, huh, forgive me. But we're individuals. You know, it's good to have a trade. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be a tradesman and have something that you can fall back on. But most of the times, if, you're, if your family isn't putting you into a profession or something like that, that's not what you really want to do with your life. Right? That's not really the thing that makes you happy. You know, it's the pursuit of something, to be honest with you. And it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's funny in a way because it's like your pursuit of this thing will bring you happiness. But at the same time, in the pursuit of this thing, right, it's going to bring you pain. It's going to bring you joy. It's going to bring you love. It's going to bring you fear. It's going to bring you hate. Enviness, jealousy, and all of these things, right? But you expect to get past all of that through the pursuit part and break out, bust out of that, right, on the other side into just a land of happiness, into the spirit of happiness. You know, that's what we think. The spirit of happiness would just dwell inside of us if we can just make it through through the pursuit part of getting to, to happiness. Sometimes you make it through that pursuit part on your way to, to, to your goal, which is happiness. And once you get there, you can't even be happy about it because you got your fucking ass kicked on the way there, right? <laughs> um, it's like that sometimes. But sometimes you get there and realize your, your happiness isn't happy because of what you went through or, you know, who's not there at that moment with you. You know? All I can say is pursue, pursue what your higher conscious tell you to pursue. That's what I'm pursuing now. Because the pursuit of anything else in this world is arbitrary. It doesn't make sense. And it's simply because there's more to life than just this physical body and this physical form that we're in. And we're living life as if this is the end all be all to everything. But you're bigger than that. There's more life after this. There's more. You have to get there. You have to get to that point. <clears throat> and what you acquire in this life, it helps you in the next. Things that you do in this life will help you in the next when you transcend to whatever next level of life is there. Because it's still going to be you. You're not going to be in this vessel. I can pretty much guarantee you that. 
You may be in a different vessel or you may not have a vessel to be in. You might not have to have a vessel anymore after this life has, you know, passed. So whatever it is that you're being told, led to, guided to, you know, do for you and your family to leave a legacy, to make a mark, to, 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 to help others out with your words, with your charity, with your encouragement, with your music, with, with, with whatever your, your talent and ability is to help people out. You know, you, you have to do that. These are things that, that, that'll grant you blessings, grace and mercy into the next level of life. Cause some of us, I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of us never experience grace and mercy here on this earth. I don't know why. I don't know, is it by design? It seems like the most heinous people get the most grace and mercy out of this life that we live. People that do the, the sickest crimes or the, or the heinous things in, in society to, to, to masses of people. They're the ones that get to live great lives and things like this. And the good people, the good people who are who are pursuing their happiness and their legacy and their, you know, their dreams and their aspirations, they get the hard knock life. They either get diseases, sickly, they either retarded in some way, have ADHD or ADD, or just fucked over by life. You know, that's what it seems like. You're doing all the wrong things here. You know, you get the world is your oyster. But when you do the right things, nothing comes of it. In a lot of ways, in a lot of times. You know, sometimes, you know, you're blessed to have. To, to have the luxury of not having to pursue anything because maybe it was provided or maybe you was told or taught in a way. But all is not that lucky, right? So really all we're doing is throwing stones out on the pond, just seeing how many times it'll skip until it sinks to the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of the pond rather you know it it should really be an equal playing field for everybody right but it's not if you ask anybody that's successful at anything you know it's not an equal playing field out here for anybody you know the poor gets poor and the rich gets richer you know, sometimes, yeah, you got the occasional poor who gets rich and you have the occasional rich who gets poor. There has to be uh, a more balanced system. There has to be a more, mm, more generous approach to the way we live life. And by that, I'm saying that our laws and statues have to change because everybody's pursuit of happiness is different and everybody's happiness is different. And some people, happiness or pursuit of happiness or whatever it is that, they, that, that goal that they're trying to reach, that, that pinnacle, it's just being able to live life the way that they want to live life. Right? That's what it's all about. Everybody just want to live life the way that they want to live life without being imposed on in any type of way. 
on any type of duress or stress by any foreign entities or local municipalities or government entities as well. And that's what happened a lot of times in our life. You know, we get broadsided by our cities, our state, and our municipalities a lot of times. We get broadsided by these people. You know, when these same people that broadside us can go out and do pretty much anything they want without any, you know, infraction, slaps on the wrist and whatnot. But since you're not, uh, you know, you might have some 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 royal blood in you, but since you're from the, uh, you know, from the barrio. <laughs> from the hood, whatever. They don't want to acknowledge you at all. A lot of us in these neighborhoods, urban neighborhoods that they're currently uh, and been gentrified, gentrified for a long time, they know who you are. They know you have royal blood. A lot of them, they know exactly who you are. They know why you are where you are. And there are reasons for that. Right? And we're so connected to this earth and everything that it is and everything that it is that we're from. Because we're from here and we're from somewhere else. That it's actually decreed, I think, that they always keep certain people or certain families in certain places. Now, I know I'm getting off on something completely different than what I was talking about. I was talking about the pursuit of happiness, right? Well, like I said, in that pursuit of happiness, there should be no law or statute governing you from being able to reach that point. Like, as long as you're not hurting anybody or, you know, committing any crimes and, you know, I mean, crimes, that's laws, right? <laughs> but as long as you're not hurting anybody or, or you know, imposing on anybody or, or, you know, making yourself a nuisance where it's, it's actually disrupting people in a way where, you know, they can't even ignore it. You should be free to do whatever you want, to be honest with you. I mean, that's just my opinion. But opinions are like assholes and we all have them. You know, I was looking on um, online in the .gov section of the online stuff, and I found um, folklore way of living. Like it's like a, a older way of living, and it was here in the United States. These were, you know, different rules to live by in order to live a peaceful, harmonious life, or you know, not peaceful, harmonious, but in order not to, you know, make any bad blood. You know, everybody had their own thing, this and that. But you know, if there was any discourse, it was handled appropriately. And very viciously and swiftly as well. The only way, I mean, the only reason I do believe they did away with the folklore laws that was in place is because people wanted to do do harm or or, or trick people or commit crimes, and with the folklore laws that was on, in place, no one would have any impunity. If you was a governor and you was screwing somebody over, you would get the same punishment as anyone would. It was no slap on the wrist or don't do it again. No, you get prosecuted to the full extent of the law, just like you would anybody else. But nowadays with the you know recent laws and everything and people being able to write them their self, all they gotta do is stay in the office and keep doing the corrupt shit that they're doing to the point where 
they can get to a point where they can actually write laws that helps them out when they get caught in any type of uh, embezzlement schemes or lewd activities. That's why they get away with everything. All right? And I'm not talking about white people in general. I'm talking about politics and all the type of stuff. They get away with it because they'll actually make preparations and plans and things like that. I mean, you know, we do it too. What am I talking about? I'm, honestly, I'm sleepy. This podcast is 25 minutes long. I'm about to go to bed. But no, my thing is, not the bed, but I might, um, I don't know. One thing for sure, two things for certain. I enjoyed it on this podcast, and I appreciate y'all listening. Um, yeah, this is Mr. Pagan. Got new music coming out. Got proof for release. Don't forget about my book, Nature's Features. Yeah, please read the book. Please read the book. Please check out the streams on all stream platforms. Yeah, support, support, support. All right, y'all. Peace. Love y'all. Safe travels.